are many types of fandoms that people can be interested in. These can range from sporting events, books, TV shows and films. But what makes fandom so appealing? And why do people become so invested that they dedicate their life to it? Hi, my name is Jess and my aim is to answer these questions. This is an exploration of fandom. Firstly, it is important to establish what the definition of fandom is. According to Google, fandom is defined as the fans of a particular person, team, fictional series, etc. regarded collectively as a community or subculture. To me, this definition highlights one thing. Fandom is about community. As someone who has been in the Harry Potter fandom for over a decade, I have personally invested my life into this fandom. I did a questionnaire to see what people thought about the difference between being in a fandom and considering themselves fans. Two responded with knowledge as separating the two. Fans are viewed as more casual and isolated compared to people who are involved in fandoms who might view other content about it or obsess over it. I did some interviews with some fans asking what their thoughts were on fandom culture and why people get involved in fandoms. What fandoms are you in? Um, I guess I'm in the TV and film, video game, anime, that type of fandoms, I guess. I would say I'm a part of the anime fandom and any sort of video game fandom, which most particular would be Monster Hunter or something like Apex Legends, I'd say. Um, I would class myself as being part of a few different fandoms. Um, I'd say things such as Harry Potter, Star Wars, Marvel, and I've recently got into Heartstopper. What are your thoughts on fandom culture? I mean, yeah, it's alright. It brings people together. It's all about community and stuff like that. I think fandom culture is quite interesting because it gives people sort of a place to share their interest in these different films and TV shows and different things people can, you know, talk about their different interests and different characters and it's just a space that people can sort of share their interests. Depending where, well depending on what part, what fandom you're a part of specifically, it can be good or bad. Uh, do you have like an example of that would be um, the My Academia fandom? Uh, that one, there is some good sides to it and there are some bad sides to it and the bad sides are very obvious when you walk in when you like just look at it so there's that why do you think people get involved in fandoms i'd say people get involved because it's where they find people with similar interests to them it's where they have uh, stuff to talk about through communities uh, from what i've seen on places like reddit which have full communities dedicated to places They'll even discuss like the latest things about the stuff that they're a part of. I guess it makes them happy to talk to meet people that like the same things as them and have similar views, I guess. I think it gives people a sense of unity and I suppose friendships can grow from different being being part of different fandoms. I think um people might like that sense of community and you know, other things are associated with fandoms such as like cosplay and and then things like Comic Con, it sort of brings a bit of a social aspect to being interested in that particular form of media. As I mentioned, I am a part of the Harry Potter fandom. I got into the fandom during 2011, when the last film was coming out in the cinema. I watched all the films before I watched the last film and read all the books. There was a point where I watched the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone almost every day and memorized the entire film. Twelve years later, I have a room dedicated to the franchise and I have been fortunate enough to go to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in the University of Orlando, Florida. Through this fandom, I have been able to make friends and meet people, collect merchandise and even meet cast members from the films. This would not have been possible without being involved in the fandom. While researching for this documentary, I was interested in whether or not psychology was associated with people's interest in fandoms. Early psychologists, such as Freud and Kagan, from 1949 and 1958 respectively, stated that fanship has roots in group identification. 
Group identification is a process where people include attributes of the group as themselves. Fans and non-fans can be separated by knowledge, as I have previously mentioned. However, sports fans do not consider knowledge as important and yet focus on emotional commitment differences. There are also different types of fans. There are casual fans who are more laid back, fair weather fans who usually just support the winning team rather than the same team every year, and diehard fans who are strongly devoted to their fandoms. I asked my interviewees what their thoughts about the relationship between psychology and fandoms. Here are their responses. Do you think there's psychology behind fandoms? I'm not sure. Maybe. I mean, probably, because it's a bunch of people in a community. There's obviously going to be some sort of psychology behind that. Um, I'm not quite sure. I suppose there is like a psychological aspect of, like, sort of wanting to be in a friendship group and want to sort of be in a, in a in a social group. I suppose. So I suppose psychologically, I guess if you're in a fandom you're more connected to other people? Uh, I don't know really, I just think the only thing really behind it is just people like stuff and they want to talk about it, that's really it. Although fandoms can be a good way to interact with others who have similar interests, fandoms can also become toxic. This can be due to fans attacking other fans for not knowing the same amount of facts. Toxic fans are looking for control of the fandom they can even start targeting actors in shows and films. In December 2017, Star Wars actor Kelly Marie Tran was racially and sexually discriminated against by fans. Fans were upset due to the fact that she is Asian American of Vietnamese descent, a woman, and because she is not the Hollywood female body type. Tran decided to deactivate her social media accounts, stating that she has truly just been so happy without being on the internet. This has also happened recently to actress Leah Sarva Jeffries when she got cast on the upcoming Percy Jackson Disney Plus series. She received racist backlash after her casting was revealed since she did not match the description that was in the book. Rick Ryden, the author of the Percy Jackson novels and executive producer of the TV show, responded to the backlash on his blog, stating, I have been clear as the author that I was looking for the best actors to inhabit and bring to life personalities of these characters and their physical appearance was secondary to me. Leah Jeffries is Annabeth Chase. Ryan then continues to break down people's offences when being called out that they were being racist on his blog at rickryden.com. I have also asked my interviewees their opinions on whether or not fandoms can become toxic. Here are their responses. Do you think fandoms can become like toxic? Oh yeah, I think definitely um, like fandom discourse is a term that's sort of thrown around a lot online and you know if people have different ideas of you know characters of who they like or who they want to like ship characters with for example I know that can become quite toxic and I suppose there's an element of like toxic fanboys that gets thrown around especially in things like Star Wars where people claim to be like a bigger fan or more of a fan than somebody else and that can become toxic I suppose. I guess it can be, it can, it has positives and negatives to it, I guess. What do you say the positive and negatives are? Uh, well the negatives is that they become toxic sometimes because people can get so obsessed and um, I guess invested in the fandom that then they bicker and argue over opinions and topics and then toxicity arrives. Very much so, yeah. I've seen when fandoms have become toxic, especially when it comes to anime. That one, you can get the good side of it where the creators will get praised for their art style or storytelling, but then there's like the downside of it where if there's something that the fans didn't like and the creator put in, uh, the fans will generally get too toxic. And I feel, especially at the My Academia one, I do know back in 2019, maybe 18, uh, death threats were sent to the creator over a certain decision. That's it. I know one anime uh, community got toxic, which is the Attack on Titan. And they, uh, they can become really toxic. And um, I think 
after the latest season aired, they started uh, review bombing Breaking Bad of all shows um, because the rating of that show was higher than Attack on Titan and they thought that shouldn't be the case. So they review bombed and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty toxic. So Overall, fandoms can be a great way for fans to communicate with others about their interests. However, it is important to keep in mind the other side of fandoms that can become toxic and how fans respond both online and offline. To bring this back to the question I asked at the beginning, why do people get so invested in fandoms? It is for a sense of community. I hope that you keep this in mind the next time you become invested in fandoms. Goodbye.